We're building a pond in the backyard. We dug a hole, we filled it, and it leaks, and now we're trying to figure out how to fix it. You guys know the pros and the cons. It's up to you to make the decision for us. Whatever you guys say, we're going with. I'm still 50-50. Going on, folks, welcome back. That's right, we've got a pond update for you guys. You guys are not gonna want to miss this. We're gonna tour some ponds that are nearby that have liners, have clay and bent night, totally the pros and cons. We've got an update for you. But before that, I gotta let you know if you haven't already seen it, Beefcake Jerky just dropped a Valentine's Day crate. Who told you? you go. Huh? So we've got a bunch of crates right here ready to rock and roll. We've been shipping them out the door. We dropped them a few days ago. You order the crate, $69.69 to your door, comes in this crate, bam. Time to get hot and spicy. You might be wondering why are we getting hot and spicy. Not just because it's Valentine's Day, because we've got brand new beef, hot and spicy beef jerky. This is a brand new flavor. We've never launched it. The only way you can get it right now is in the Valentine's you Day box. Two. You get two. One for you and your significant other. Plus you get two leather koozies, okay? That way you can share some cold pops, okay? Cool it down after you eat the hot and spicy. And then it comes with every single jerky flavor. So original, peppered, honey barbecue, sweet heat, pork teriyaki and some fuzz if you want to drizzle it all never mind so that thing comes shipped directly to your door so maybe you guys are watching i promise your girlfriend she doesn't know what to get you this year okay see shopping for girls is easy flowers chocolate jewelry perfume a nice little love letter okay it's easy think about it if you're a girl what do you get your boyfriend what do you get the dude okay I'm telling you tell your girl you want banjo's meat in your mouth that's all you got to say she will be able to figure it out at beefcakejerky.com for 69 dollars 69 cents or if you want to get your girl girlfriend banjos me put in her mouth then you can also get maybe get two of them but this box comes in the custom box all the jerky including the brand new flavor two bags of our unreleased hot and spicy two koozies and every other flavor in one box this valentine's day and you have to order before the 8th i believe to guarantee it by valentine's day so i'm telling you last minute shoppers if you don't have that special someone in your life a gift yet i'm telling you what you got to get them is some of banjos me in their mouth at bkjerky.com limited time and limited edition when they're sold out they are sold out for good. We'll see you guys at the house. Shoo! What's going on, folks? We are at the Animal Pen. Today is the very first major update. Well, kind of. Kind of major update on the pond. We're making progress, ladies and gentlemen. If you're new here, we're building a pond in the backyard. We dug a hole. We filled it, and it leaks. And now we're trying to figure out how to fix it. Do we use clan bet night? Do we use a liner? Do we fill it back in and cut our losses? That's kind of what we're dealing with. And I've been asking you guys for help this entire time. And you guys have been pretty helpful for the most part. But I still haven't really exactly made a decision. And so what I thought it might be easier for you guys to help me make a decision is if we go and tour other ponds in this area, ones that have used clay and bet night, ones that have just used bet night, ones that didn't use anything, and then ones that used an actual rubber liner, and get your guys' opinions. Kind of see firsthand what they look like, and then hopefully get the opinions of the owners while we're out there, and they can tell us the pros, the cons, what they liked, what they didn't like. You can, I mean, again, the cost is going to be relatively the same, so I'm not really going to make my decision based off of how much it's going to cost. It's going to be a lot of money, whether we use a liner or we do the clay and bet night. You know, there's pros and cons to both of them, and we'll go through those a little bit later today as well, but we're going to go on a tour, full-blown pond tour with all my neighbors that have ponds and ask them, how did you get yours to hold water or does it hold water? And if you could redo it, what would you change about it? But we are down with the animals. What's pork chop do? Pork chop. Pork chop. Come on. <laughs> Almost trusting us. Come here, pork chop. Get him, pork chop. Get him, pork chop. There. Por uh, pork no. chop. Come here, Very pork chop. You, you think so? Get after it, pork chop. All right, we got to get we got to get a little bowl for them because they got they flipped it over. So now it's basically just mud. As you can tell, everything's kind of thawed out out here. So it's just it's a muddy mess. Yeah, this isn't uh, doesn't smell great either. I can tell you that much. But bam, get it, pork chop. Get Dev. Good morning, Dev. Move it or lose it. Come on, Dev. We ain't got all day, Dev. Come on, Dev. You got it, Dev. I believe in you, Dev. Come on. You can do it. Deb's, she hasn't got any smaller. I'll tell you that much. Deb, come get some food, Deb. It's breakfast time, Deb. Hi, big girl. How's it going? Are you staying warm in there? It's actually been so warm. It was like 50, 50 degrees yesterday. We don't have the heat lamps going anymore. They've been chilling. I guess we reduced it just down to one, but. So, heat lamp's chilling, doing its thing, at least keeping big Deb warm. But yeah, like, look at this. This is, it's all wet now because it thawed. So we're gonna have to give them some new, some new fresh bedding. Some fresh straw. Grab some of this stuff here. Yeah, look, see it? Now the pigs are starting to kind of like root or whatever where they start moving around and doing pig things. Let's see if I can grab a little flake here. There you go. Some nice fresh bedding right under that heat lamp. 
that way they're nice and dry so that's an update on the pigs they're hanging out i mean look at this like this is from it washing out i mean it like almost buried this coming down this hill so we've had a huge snow melt we got more snow this year than we had in years past by a lot and now it all is melting and you What's going on there? <laughs> what the hell are you doing, Rick? Why are you up there? I ain't never seen him up there before. Get off there. Hey, you get down. Who told you to get up there? Theodore? What have I told you? You tell, you tell me you can't do that. You say, get down. How do you even get up there? Yeah, I don't know. Why are you up there? It's kind of impressive. <laughs> I have a lot of questions. Come here, Theo. Theo, we're gonna have to scoop this out at some point, Theo. Yeah, you're like yeah. 10 inches taller than us. You get 10 inches of poop in here, but we've just been adding straw and bedding and basically building up. It's not like it's a big deal, but yeah, we're gonna have to clean it out at some point. Big Theo. It's been a while, buddy. How's life been? Whatever. Hi, buddy. Hey, can I hold you? Come here, Theodore. <laughs> Big, big boy, how you doing? You hanging out? You're nice and warm. What are you two doing? Are you guys friendly or no? Can I grab you? Hey, you calm down. Come here. Look out. All right, they're not in. Don't look out. Hey, 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 Theo, get him, Theo. Get him, Theo. Get him, Theo. Theo beat his ass. I don't know what's going on. Now, did you see him? Yeah, he's... Theo got all fight. Get him, Theo. That was cool. I like that. All right, Theo, don't do anything I wouldn't do. For no reason, Theo just, just decided to be violent. I didn't really see the need for that, Theo, but that was funny. All right, what are you guys doing? They're all in their hut, huh? Hiding out in the back. Same thing. I mean, look. That's how much hoop. I mean, that was like two months. Hoop and, Hoop and straw. straw, just So we're getting close. It's just like, we want to do a spring clean out, you know, hold off as long as we possibly can, but that poop's getting thick, son. What are you guys doing? What hey, you ladies, doing? how you doing? You having a good time? Look at buddy eating that Timothy A. Everybody's hanging out. Now you see they're starting to change colors now. You got a couple yeah. brown ones and a couple Stay gray down. ones. Yeah, you calm down. Mommy, there. get them, mama. So these guys are hanging out. They're doing fine. Everything's dry. Everything's warm, like I said. Now everything's kind of warmed up and melted. It's I don't have as much stress about keeping these suckers alive. When it was like negative 40 and snowing, it was tough to make sure everybody stayed nice and warm. But Rabbit's made it. He's back. Look at him. Huh? Why are you back up there? Why is that your thing now? Pigs made it. Okay. Rabbit's made it. All right, chickens. What are you doing, you dirty cock? You guys hanging out? Look at them laying. Get it. Get it. All right, so back here. Nothing, we didn't loot, we had one casualty. Okay, I think it just got too cold, but we've got it all nice and warm back here now. Look, we got a light. Three, we have lights. <laughs> so we got this going on back here. Keeping it nice and toasty with only one lamp. 43. That ain't too bad. Space heater they're pooping on. Yeah, I kind of saw that coming, but we unplugged that a while ago. This is, we've got it ready for like negative a billion degrees. Luckily it warmed up, so we got everything kind of cooled off and back home. It looks like all the chickens must be out roaming. There's only a couple in here. Where are you sucking? Hey, get, no, no. Why you want to go out that way? No, get back. Yeah. Oh yeah, they get it. Well, Who's cocks that? <laughs> It's gotta be one of ours, right? Yeah. yeah. What in the sand? Whatever. Listen, you gotta learn the hard way or something. But yeah, all the chickens are now, now it's not so cold, they're actually roaming out here, which is good. They're kind of doing their thing. Ralph, hey, where you at, big boy? Oh, there he is. He's hiding behind the hay bale. Come here, Ralph. Big boy, Ralph. <laughs> Eating that nice hay, Ralphie. So far, a little hay system worked out pretty darn good. We can enter from here and not get scissor kicked by the camera. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. What shifted? You see how far off that is now? Yeah. At one point that worked. Yeah. I blame the snow, I'm not sure. Big boy, come here, Ralph. Everybody misses you. Dale, God dang. Look how thick you are. <laughs> Dale, you're a thick boy, Dale. Did that goose ever shut up or no? No. Hey, you quiet. Be Carol, tell him to shut up. See, if we become real quiet, he'll become quiet. Oh yeah, how's really? this going? <laughs> Ricky! Rick's just chilling. What you doing, big boy, Ricky? Don't, no, Ricky, no. Do not do that. Yeah, it's a money mess down here. But they've got fresh hay, so they're chilling. I don't know what happened there. I'm guessing the post move. I'm just gonna move the latch up. We might have to do some adjustments. It, I mean, it still, it still works for the sake of this. It still works, doesn't it, Dale? What are you doing, Ralph? You made it through the cold. Everybody was worried about Ralph. He, listen, he's fine. He's covered in fur. Dale's thick. They got fresh, dry hay at all times. So everything made it through the winter. No, I wouldn't say that. It's not like winter's over, but like, uh, in my opinion, that's the bulk of it. Ton of snow, super cold. Last time we were kind of updating you guys, it was getting a little sketchy out here, but we're good to go. More importantly, we're gonna talk about the pond today. And now that the snow melted, for those of you guys that are new, if you only saw the last video of us at the pond, it was tough to really imagine the pond because it was covered in snow, like two feet of snow. Now most of it's melted. And some of you guys might be thinking, well, Flair, what happened? When the snow melted, did it fill up the pond? You guys will have to stay tuned. All right, so we are at the pond. This is what it looks like when there's mostly no snow. We've got some water sitting down here. I'm not exactly sure how deep it is, but don't think that that means it's holding water. Now, it really did hold decently well this summer. I mean, come on now. 
That's deep. You're almost to the sack. It. I said we stock it. I'm down. It's ready to rock. It took, I don't know, three months of not pumping it in like just a million degrees with no rain for it to actually dry that up completely. And part of the thing that I'm like, I'm not really kicking myself because I think this pond is still good. But the reason why this pond is so deep is because we tried to get all the topsoil out to get down to the clay layer. And now we're going to have to cover it up, which means we probably spent more money excavating this and digging this deeper than you really needed. I mean, most baths hang out in like three to six feet of water. No reason for this thing to be like averaged at 12 feet deep, right? That doesn't really help you because you got the thermocline. They can't obviously spawn that deep. So now that we're having to probably cover it with something, whether it's a liner or a clay, we're probably going to end up having to reshape a lot of this and giving the bass, like this is a perfect example. This is a nice little shallow shelf. You know, that might be four or five feet deep. We probably are going to have to add a few more of them because right now it's just kind of like a fishbowl. There's a couple little contours, but overall the pond is, in my opinion, too deep. But we went that deep to try to get past the top so to get to like what we thought would be the clay layer, but clearly it's not actually clay. It's a uh, phony. It's a, it's a, uh, I don't even know what you would want to call it. Fake clay. It's fake clay clay. It looks like clay, but it ain't clay because it don't hold water. So this is what it looks like down here. I can kind of show you. I don't know how deep that water is. I didn't bring waders or super tall boots to figure it out, but this is kind of what everything looks like again. So if, you get, if you're new here and trying to figure out what is this kid talking about with this pond, this is the pond. We dug this over the summer and it was a multi-use deal. Okay. We used a lot of this dirt that we dug from this hole to build the shop pad, build out the yard around my house. So it wasn't like I just dug a hole and now I'm like, well, why did I just do that? You know, it worked out. We were able to borrow the soil but see this like this soil is not it's too sandy like there's not it's not clay like enough so that's what we have right now for water and again more than likely it's probably going to stay here this is the lowest spot on the pond it actually holds water pretty decent it's once it starts to get out there it does not hold well at all and so this is kind of what we're dealing with right now and you know after all that snow melt, I mean, we had runoff coming from those hills that's all we're left with that's not very much in my opinion that's i mean you've got a lot like we could make this much water using the well in like a day so so there's not enough runoff. It's not holding enough water. Just by how I'm standing on this, it's like a sandy material is kind of what we're dealing with. We thought it was clay. It's obviously not. So this is what we're dealing with now. Like I said, there's multiple neighbors around here that have ponds. I've reached out to them. We're going to go travel to their locations tomorrow. And I don't think any of them are quite as big as this pond, but to my knowledge, some of them are just as deep. And so we're going to get their opinion. I kind of told them what, what's going on. I said, I got a hole in the ground and it, ain't, and it ain't holding water. How did you get your pond to hold water? And would you do it differently if if you could do it all over again. So we'll see you guys tomorrow. Shoo! All right, we are at the first pond, ladies and gentlemen. It is the next day. So this is exhibit number one. How do you how you feel about it? You like your pond? You don't like your pond? I love it, yes. You love it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, so this is gonna be, what's interesting is we've got multiple ponds with multiple techniques, but they're all relatively in the same area, similar kind of like contour and landscape as mine, meaning like we don't live where there's clay. Not a lot of clay. See, he can confirm that. I should have called him before I dug my hole, but you actually did soil samples, didn't you? I did, yep. So you did it the right way. So all you comment, and what did you find out? It held. It held for like 36 hours before we, okay. before we dug it at first, yeah. And then what? And then we dug it. It's more the pressure of when you get 15 feet or 10 feet of water on top of that soil. Gotcha. Drain. See, none of you guys commented that, all right? So I'm going to tell you, you guys still have some research to do. But I never thought about that either. When I filled my pond and it sank, I only had like 6 to 12 inches on it. You're saying at one point your pond held, but if you oh. added more water, that pressure would push it down and it, and it would seep. It would basically break the barrier there. Yeah, if I let it go to 5 or 6 feet, it would probably hold. I put some bit night in it. So, oh, okay. Yeah, but once you get 8, 9, 10, 11, that's all that water. Too much, too much pressure. Pressing on that, yeah. I, I never put that into consideration because our pond's pretty. I haven't measured it, but I think it's deep. Like, yeah. I 12, yeah. 15. Yeah. Like, there's some deep spots, and most of it's really deep. So, I guess it's this one's full right now, but what's what's the deepest? What's the shallowest? Like, how does it? How does this pond look? I could go probably another foot, but on the on that end, you're probably looking at anywhere from 12 to 15 feet. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's way deeper than I thought. Okay. It's probably six to seven. Six to seven. So, it just kind of slowly yeah. yep. tapers yeah. down. Cool. This is pretty slick. This dock, you guys build this dock? Yes. Build it on a Sunday afternoon. R All right, I know who I'm calling when we need a dock. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we took some, like, logs. For, we had, like, some extra logs from building the chicken coop. Oh, yeah. And then we just took some nails, and we just, like, screwed them in. And that's it. So we just, like, went up in our shop, and we, like, built this structure, and then found these two things, and then we just, like, put it, like, brought it all down here, and then we just, like, had the dock. Yeah, really. I know who I'm calling to build yeah, my dock. Yeah, hey, yeah. You're, you're, hey, you're hired, all right? Well, you're hired. That, that holds the dock in place? Yeah. So I see you guys have some, you have some aerators. What are your thoughts? I've got a couple bubblers in, like, a little hatchery, but yeah. pros uh, and cons, or? Yeah, mostly pros. I don't 
want it when it gets below like 20 degrees because that can actually make the pond get way colder faster because it's oh, up from the bottom. I see. The bottom. But if it's a, like today, it don't look like it, but it's like 30 degrees or you get up to 50. So I'll, I'll run it, but just more oxygen for the fish. Yeah. Um, just helps them out. Helps like we don't get moss. We don't get grass pads because water's constantly moving. Yeah. So in like the summer, it helps with like the vegetation and stuff oh, yeah, like absolutely. that. Yeah, we have, it's when all this melts, I mean, we'll have two, three feet of visibility. Wow. That's pretty good. Okay. So when you built this, you said you used bentonite. Did you bring in any clay in bentonite? or did you just pack bentonite in? If I could do it over again, I'd probably bring in a little bit of clay, but no, we just did 60 tons of bentonite, put it down, compacted it, and then, uh, yeah, filled it up. Okay. And it still, does it completely hold or does it still have a small leak? It's still a small leak. Like I said, when it gets full, I mean, I have to run the well probably one third, maybe a fourth of the time just okay. to keep it topped off. Gotcha. Yep. And then it's in the summer. And we're also in a drought. So, I mean, yeah, I, the summer was brutal. I was going to say, if we had like a normal season, it, I guess it could be different. So, when in a drought, you only ran it a quarter of the time. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. not, that's not yeah. bad. I feel like that's not terrible. I mean, just so you know, that when we like, we had one rain this summer, one good rain, like three or four inches i came home and water was shooting out of the overflow oh really yeah okay yeah. and you don't i mean you have some runoff but it's nothing like you don't have a huge like valley or anything so but, i mean yeah i have runoff definitely. yeah that's interesting okay so you you didn't bring in clay you just brought in bet night you packed the bet night and it still leaks small but it's manageable it's manageable it's, yeah and this pond is i don't know i guess i don't know how big this pond would acre be. and a half probably acre, acre and a half or so yeah. it's it just it's kind of runs a little bit long so mine's like almost like a circle this one's a little bit skinnier but the fact that it's 14 feet deep it's so deceiving. Yeah, I never, I never would have expected that. And so, what, what fish do you have in here? I guess give us. Give, we're here on how to build the pond, but we got to figure out what to do with it if we ever get water. In it. Grass so we carp, start. minnows, bluegill, Alabama bass, um, goldfish. Alabama bass. No, just, oh, just, so pond number one, similar depth. Okay, so it's not like just a shallow. I learned something new that I didn't really consider the depth of the water applying more pressure. But you didn't use clay. You think you probably would have if you would have just, in hindsight, you would have redid it maybe. Yeah, bringing a little bit of clay and then a sandwich of clay on top of it got it and probably use a sheep foot roller to actually yep. pack through the whole thing but even though it's not perfect it still works it you works, don't, yeah. it, it, it works good. It works good enough and didn't cost a ton of money bringing it. So you brought in how much bent now you said? One truck. So 29 and a half ton. One truck. 20, load. Okay. One, one truck load. Okay. Yeah. Well, there you have it folks. Pond number one holds water, has a small leak, just bent night, no clay. We'll see you at the next one. So behind me is the next pond, ladies and gentlemen. This one is a little bit bigger, I would say, than the last one. Yeah, don't you think? For maybe sure. maybe by yeah. a little bit. How deep did you say this one was? Twenty two feet. Tw definitely deeper. That's deep. This wow. One. Go should we go I take dips? Yeah, so touch the bottom. So I guess yeah, it's what do you think, like a acre and a half or two acres maybe? Or probably an acre and a half. Maybe an acre maybe an acre and a half. But it's this one's designed just kinda like a bowl, right? There's not a bunch of contours to it. Twenty two feet deep. And so how did you build this? How, what was the process? Is there a liner? Is there clay? Is there bentonite? Is there nothing? There's, there's bentonite in there. We went through, just dug everything out, put bentonite in, and then uh, brought soil back in, compacted that. And that's it. that's it? So no actual clay and no rubber liner. You just added bentonite. And so since you filled it, how, I guess how would you fill it? Would be like, filled it with a hose. To, a garden to, hose. A garden hose to fill it with. Okay, see that makes me feel a little bit better because I've got, I have like 25 gallons a minute, which would be like maybe two garden hoses maybe we were kind of estimating. Yeah. Maybe Right, two, yeah, two, probably two. It's not much. It's it's it comes out of like a, you know maybe two like a yay a yay deal. So you how long did it take you to do that? About three four months. Of okay, <laughs> see, see you next year. I was gonna yeah, say yeah, yeah it's gonna take being a that while. deep. That makes sense. Twenty two feet is pretty crazy. You didn't add clay. You filled it with a garden hose. There's no liner. Since the day you filled it, how many inches per day does it drop usually? It does. I mean, where it's at now is about where it stays. I mean, we have you don't have to fill it at all. It That's all. crazy. See, this is the issue here, folks. We're yeah. getting conf we're getting conflicting results because the last one we went to basically did the same thing where they sprinkled bentonite and just rolled over the top of it, mm -hmm. and he says it drops like an inch a day, oh, two almost two inches a day yeah, in the two. summer. But yours doesn't. So do you, do you flip a coin? What do you yeah. do here? <laughs> That's pretty. It's that's tough. That's impressive though. That built it, filled it with a garden hose, didn't have to use any clay. You just use the soil that's around here, which we're in the hills, just like my house. Yeah. I would assume the soil is very similar to where I'm at since we're not too far. And it held. That's wow. We didn't haul anything in, so. You have fish in it? There's fish in it, yep. It's stocked with bass, bluegill, and uh, catfish? catfish, yeah. yeah. Yep. And, that, and they're, they're doing good? They're doing good, yep. Man, this is see this is conflicting. Making, it's not making it easy. Last one, it leaked a little bit, but it was still good enough. He said he was able just to maintain it. You know, it's not like it takes a ton of water. But this one, you think is pretty much sealed tight. No leaks, no nothing. You can walk around the dam. I mean, there's no wet there's spots. No Even leak. when it was as dry as it was this summer, you know, there was no wet wow. Spots on grass That's yeah, pretty crazy. And you don't get runoff either, no right? Goes around. It's all built up out of it. So, so that's a lot of ponds, like natural ponds, are runoff based, which again, mine is not going to be. So this is, I would say, similar to my pond, as you could probably yeah. get where you have no runoff off it's going to be relatively deep just like mine and so you built the whole thing 
put in the bentonite and then just took soil from around here and covered the bentonite up and just packed the heck out of it yep. basically yep. Rolled everything and filled it with the garden hose and you're set yep. and that was a few years ago yep. Yep. 20 almost four years ago and no issues have you ever, you ever worried about muskrats and stuff? Or? We had one. We've had, we had one. We did have to we did have to chase that down, come over in the corner, and <laughs> took a little bit of hunting for that to watch yeah, it see, the surface. See, that's the issue. You you can still fix that, but if a muskrat burrows a hole, it's going to pierce that that night, and you could have a problem. So yeah. they can't do that with a liner. At least I don't oh, think they, oh, they can. Dig through it, think. You think they can dig through a liner? See, so we might just be yeah. Should we might just, be screwed all the way around. We're just screwed either way. Yeah. So well. Pond number two, hopefully that information helps you guys make a decision. The last but not least is going to be the liner pond, which is going to be, it's going to be interesting to see what we find out because so far it seems like just sprinkling some bet night and rolling it works. Maybe not perfect, but it works. You guys stay tuned. Shoo! All right, so a little bit of a change of plans. That's my pond, not the pond with a liner. Okay, we are back at the house, but we did visit the pond with the liner, but the homeowner wasn't home, and so they were at work, and so I was like, that's okay. Can we just talk on the phone a little bit? So we talked on the phone a little bit and figured out exactly what the pros and the cons are, but this is their pond. So this pond right here, believe it or not, is a liner. There's a liner under this. See, the way they cover it up, you wouldn't ever know. So they used a really thick liner. It wasn't a rubber liner. He said it was like six email so it's like pretty like kind of like the highest end liner that you could possibly use is what they used on this pond what's going on there how's it going you just hanging out yeah. All over well, well, all in the name of investigating our neighbor's pond. So this pond, again, is covered in a liner. And so I was asking the owner, like, you know, how big is it? How deep it is? That pond is about an acre to an acre and a half or so. It's just, it's kind of hard to tell because not all of them are like exactly the same shape, but definitely one of the biggest ponds that we've seen. He has this dock that he's building that's designed to hold, like, he's going to do some crazy stuff with it, but it's like a really high quality dock. He put concrete footers in there. So then that was another question is like, if you put concrete concrete footers in there how did you do the liner he said you can actually like take the liner and shoot it up the column so like just because we have a liner doesn't mean we can't build a big dock or a big pier or a boathouse so a lot of this was like pros and cons based on price pros and cons based on what we can and can't do and it seems like you can kind of do anything you want with a liner that you can do with the clay and the bent night in fact i think in some cases you can do a little bit more because you can have contours now i think with the clay and the bent night you can do contours but you have to add it after the fact so i don't know if one's better than another you add it before and then you cover it with a liner or you put the clay and the bent night in a circle and then you put in like the peninsulas the islands the contours the rock piles i think you can kind of do both again this is why this is like the fifth time i've been addressing this with you guys because we still don't really have a great answer again assuming the price is about the same i mean as you can see right here the liner pond is freaking sweet like there it doesn't look much different than the other guy's pond other than it's a liner and as he said he fills it with the geothermal or but you know either way like kind of like a garden hose effect same deal not like some big gallon per minute mechanism that we don't have here every pond that we went to today they all have the same gallons per minute as me if not even less because they're just using a garden hose and all of them filled all of them whole now the guy with the liner was saying it holds 100 percent the point that he did make is when they were covering the edges with sand they made a big beach as you can see and went around the whole thing that somebody was down there with like a skid loader of some sort and twisted and ripped a hole in the line which is a big concern of mine because if we're going to be in there especially placing some structure or anything like that we, there's a chance it might happen so i asked him i said well how would you address it they said they cut it out and they just patched it he said that the person who came out and helped him with the liner they sell this like literal like tape adhesive tape and they taped it and put it on there and he goes it hasn't leaked and it's been like that for a while so that's just it you, some of you guys have concerns about the uh, the liner saying well what if you pop a hole in it apparently you can just fix it same thing goes for bent night okay if i just bent night and clay it and you have a muskrat burrow a hole you can just kind of patch the sucker i think the difference is on a liner it probably in my opinion would be easier to figure out where the leak is coming from than it would be with clay and bent night so we visited three ponds today. All three of them have different results. The first one was just a sprinkle of bentonite and kind of packed it like kind of like a just a DIY deal. No big, huge equipment. And it leaks, but not too much to not manage. He says it probably costs him a couple hundred bucks a year to run the well to fill the thing. So not the end of the world. Obviously, we're going to want this pond to not leak at all in theory. But even if there's a small leak, it sounds like it's manageable. The second pond that we went to was completely packed in there with tractor, scraper, sheep foot. I mean, like basically how we would do that one right there and he put in bet night and then covered up with soil he didn't even do clay he just used similar soil to what i have down there he just used that soil and that thing he says doesn't leak at all he says he filled it up with a garden hose and hasn't filled it up since and we're in a huge drought so that's pretty crazy to me and then the last one that we went to was the liner which has no clay no bet night and they basically just threw the liner down there put an anchor trench covered the edges up with sand so you can't even see the liner you would never know that there's a liner and his doesn't leak Whew. 
It's it's. I don't have an answer. Do you, Banjo? You want me to vote? Yeah, go ahead and vote. I like the liner. Really? I like the liner too. Really? Why? No leak. You better. Yeah, you gotta. You gotta argue with you guys because I know you guys are big clay guys. Absolutely zero leak. And if there is, it's under warranty, and we fix it. Like yeah. there's zero leak. I feel like it's just way more foolproof. You think it's you think it's a safer bet? Because if you if you do the clay in the bed night, okay, and you do it down there, I mean, keep in mind it's gonna take six to eight months to fill. So we're not gonna know if there's a leak until next winter. If there is, now we're gonna spend all winter draining it, and now it's a year from today, and we still don't have a pond, and any fish that we put in it are dead. And we do a whole nother reset. If you put a liner in, she's full. I'm still 50 50. We we need your. This is this is the last chance to vote. Okay, this is it. After this video, the next pond update that I gave you guys, we will have a decision made. That doesn't mean the pond's going to get started because everything's so freaking wet. It's probably going to take at least two, three more months for everything to dry out, especially because it is holding water down there, as you guys can see. But it's got to completely dry out before we can go in there because we, even if we do a liner, we still have to go in there and do a bunch of dirt work. We got to basically make like a rim around it. And then even if we, if we, and if we don't do the liner, we have to come in there and basically take out all the contours and make it smooth like a cereal. So either way, we have to make dirt improvements to the structure. So, and we have to wait for everything to dry in order for that to happen. So it won't be faster one way or another i think it would take about because by the if we're doing a liner although it only takes a day to install a liner the prep work will probably take a few weeks um and then covering it all back up will take another week uh versus just clay and bet night it would probably be another it probably be like a week or two of just smoothing it all up so i'm gonna go ahead and say they're the same price they take the same amount of time to do they seem pretty equal they have pros and cons like i said i'm 50 50 still but now that i've seen them in person i've seen the bet night work and i've seen the liner work meaning it's not it doesn't mean it's one's better than another, but the one with Ben Knight did leak. The one with the liner did not leak. Now, that doesn't mean liners don't leak. I just don't have any neighbors that have a line pond that do leak. We so saw, we can't say we that. We saw two claim bit night ponds today. One of them leaks for sure. Confirmed. True. You have a hatchery pond with a liner. No leak. Hatchery okay. No I, leak. That's a good point. That's a good point. We have a liner pond already. It's the hatchery pond and it ha it doesn't leak. We've seen two liner ponds, two hatchery or two claim bit night ponds. There's only one leak and it was clay and bet night. 100% is better than 50%. Yeah. Did you learn that in school? Yes. Really? So, I don't know. We're leaning towards liner, as you could tell. Some of you guys might be saying, Flair, that's the biggest mistake you could ever make. You're so dumb. I don't know. If it was your guys' money, what would you do? Would you go for the thing that's basically leak-proof-ish? Neither of them are guaranteed. And what we mentioned in the previous video earlier was the liner, for those guys that are newer, didn't catch it, the liner company that I reached out to has a 25-year warranty. They said if there's any leaks, cracks of any kind, they will come out and fix it for free for 25 years. I don't know if I'll make it that long, so I ain't really that concerned. <laughs> I feel like that's plenty of time, so I don't know. You guys have to comment down below. This is the final time to vote, and again, if we do a liner, we're gonna cover the edges up with a clay or a dirt. You won't see the liner. It'll all be protected from the UV rays. It's gonna look a lot like the, the liner pond that we just showed you, where you couldn't even tell it's a liner pond, so I don't want the I don't want the look. Everyone's like, I want it to be natural. It, they're gonna be just as natural. In fact, you can add dirt to the liner pond and plant plants. They'll be equally natural. What do we got? Somebody had a concern last time about the water quality for the fish and you figured out a solution for that, yeah? There was a comment saying the water coming out of the well might be too acidic or something. You can add stuff. You can add lime. You can add chemicals. And what they were saying is a natural dirt bottom will have enough veg like good vegetation to kind of counteract that. You can fix it by dumping lime in there. And I'm pretty sure even Bama Bass maybe did that where it basically makes an algae bloom so the plankton can do the plankton, whatever plankton does. And there's solutions to all the problems. That's just it. It's just, what do we want to deal with? Do we want to have a rubber liner? Here's one con I found to the rubber liner that I agree with. You can't shoot bullfrogs. You also can't do that in this state anyway. So, <laughs> all right, I guess legally there's no cot. Well, if there's carp, you can't shoot carp. We can both fish, you just can't shoot your arrow into the bank. But that's what I'm saying. But you can do it like where it's deep, it's not gonna go. Ooh, anywhere. that's sketchy. Ooh. Where it's 12 feet, you think it's gonna go that far? Banjo, that's sketchy, dude. <laughs> Shooting an arrow towards a line are pond. Put, are we putting enough carp in your pond to yeah. bow fish anyway? There's gonna be like four, I feel four, like we'll just right? go somewhere else There'll just that. be like four sterile. Okay, I was trying to help your clay and bet night guys out, but I, I got nothing for you. You're gonna have to argue for yourself in the comment section down below. Like I said, this is going to be the last update video before we make a decision to move forward with the liner or the clay bet night. You guys know the pros and the cons. It's up to you to make the decision for us. Whatever you guys say we're going with, potentially. We'll see. Give me some more comments and concerns. Like, hey, you guys talked about a liner, but you didn't mention this part. This could go bad. Or you talked about clay and bet night, and you didn't talk about this. I mean, we could have a family of muskrats pop 17 holes in the clay and the bet night. And hey, you're screwed, Jack. You ain't doing nothing now. That's right, Jack. 
and you know what I'm with saying? the liner, we can put the crawfish in there, the cool stuff. You can put crawfish in there. There's pros and there's cons, ladies and gentlemen. We're leaning towards the liner, but it's up to you guys to bring us back. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Remember the Valentine's Day box slash crate slash get hot and spicy, ladies and gentlemen. Is linked down in the description down below at bkjerky.com. Once they are sold out, they are sold out for good. Okay, all you dudes watching, I promise your girlfriend has no idea what to give you for Valentine's Day because it's weird, right? Like for girls, it's like give them flowers, give them chocolates, give them perfume and jewelry. It's easy. For a dude, it's like, I don't know what I want. Tell your girl you want banjo's meat in your mouth, which will be found in the link in the description down below for $69.69. Or you can get the box and give your girl banjo's meat in her mouth. You do whatever you want. Link down in the description. Hope you guys enjoyed this video because you're in peace.